size of Milford. I'd like to talk to you tonight about eight houses versus 16 houses to the acre and the institutional overlay that was approved. Uh, it's going to come up before the council again this evening for discussion. I just wanted to make a few comments about it. We didn't have an institutional overlay when we designed one. When that was designed by the planning board, there was no uh, reason, and they did not put in an R8. Somehow, the R8 was added to the institutional overlay that was added to the council. The council voted on incomplete information. They were aware of it, but at the time, because it was brought up at the time, but it didn't change the facts, so uh, it was approved to allow an institution to build R8 instead of building the institution. An R8 means they can build eight houses or 16 townhouses. My personal opinion is Milford doesn't need more 16 houses to an acre. With that in mind, uh, because the information that was given to the council was incomplete and incorrect, Mr. Randy Marble of the Planning Board in uh, December of 07 came to the council with a recommendation from the Planning Board that it be changed to an R2. An R2 would allow five, five houses for 10 townhouses. One of the objections that was stated at the meeting at the time was that there was a piece of property, which was the, uh, I believe the Isaacs property, that came into the city of Milford with the zoning of allowing the builder to not build institutional, but just to build 16 townhouses. But if you look at the record, when the builder originally started out, he wanted to be annexed to the city. At that time, when he contemplated and when he filed, there was no institutional overlay. So he was well aware it has to be one of the uh, zones <coughs> that he had on file had proof. Consequently, when he realized that there was discussion of the institutional, he then backed off, requested that his application not go forward. It did not go forward. Several months later, he came back with his proposal to have the institutional overlay with the 16 houses to the acre. It was approved. Uh, evidently, it wasn't by both of four members of the town council. And if my understanding is correctly, I read the newspaper, uh, you're going to bring it up again to talk about and vote so we can clear the year so we don't have any lawsuits against the city. Uh, I think it's good that you do vote, but I do realize, and I think you should realize, that and this, our city attorney has stated, and I'm looking at the record of the December meeting, that uh, the city has the power and the authority to change an ordinance. And any ordinance they change is not retroactive. It applies, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it applies to everyone, regardless of the fact. Unless they have started construction or they have their permits and things of that nature. So if the builder was building, obviously you can't take it away. But no work has been done. And the city has the right, as I understand it, what our attorney has stated, that uh, the city has the right to change an ordinance that applies to everybody. So the question really before you is, leave it the way it is, and we have 16 houses, 16 townhouses the acre. If that happens, if I were, for example, Mr. Dugan, who had the property next to it, or Mr. Mills, or any other builder in the town, I would come forward, change my zoning to an institutional overlay, and then I could build an R3, an R2, an R1, and I could do anything I wanted in the city of Milford, we don't need a zoning on housing. We would just have one zone, anything you want. So with that in mind, I think it behooves the council, and I would recommend that you change the institutional overlay to an R2, which gives uh, all the builders an opportunity to build 10 townhouses, five houses to the acre, if everything else is in place. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldstein. 